keeps accumulating like a snowball effect. We've got the knowledge of the ages at our fingertips. God will talk to everybody. He does talk through the scriptures. But the spirit of truth is alive and it's there for any of us to tap into. You need the right opinion on this or that issue that might be controversial? Ask God in prayer. Say, if I've been wrong all along, then show me. If I'm right, then let me... But don't let it be false pride. Don't let me think I'm right when I'm wrong. I'm just deluded and deceived and, and just complying to the establishmentarian ways inadvertently. I didn't even know it, but, the, you know, I've been satanic in my beliefs, and I didn't know it, that I was a pissant and, you know, small-minded and short-sighted and not seeing through your eyes, God. If you're being intellectually honest, you'll get it. So it's there for everybody. The truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth is just a prayer away for all of us. We can all tap in, and all that accumulated wealth of the ages is at our fingertips. So we're all without excuse, that vast wanton knowledge, that great power of being out of ignorance and out of confusion, and being two steps ahead of these evildoers, and saying, no, we got your number, we're going to put you in your place. Maybe we need to just start arresting some of these people willy-nilly, just grab a few of them. These elitist types, these big fat hypocrites, these evildoers, the guys that put up the Georgia Guidestones, arrest them. What are your plans here? You want to get the earth down to 500 million? No, I don't care if this is private property. You talk about hate speech. You hate so much, you want to get rid of 90% of the people, and it's right in everybody's face. All these sayings sound so altruistic. Read them for yourself after they get the earth down to 500 million. So these are the, these criminals. They need to be arrested. What are your, what's your agenda? Could you imagine if I had some agenda and I said, yeah, locally, I know the best thing for my town of Chico. i got to get rid of 90% of you. It's to save Chico because there's just not enough jobs and, well, we got all these homeless people. So I just, you know, in order to make it good for the other 10% that Chico survive, I've got to get rid of 90% of you. Could you imagine if I came up with that plan, how that would sound? So I put up my own little monuments on my own little private property. Could you imagine the consternation I'd face? But yet we don't hear any people. What? George, never heard of Georgia Guidestones. What? You conspiracy theorist. You nutbag. And so they'll just live in ignorance, and then, you know, they don't think about the fact that they're going to have to meet their maker someday. There's going to be a day of reckoning for every soul, judgment day. And our beliefs need to hold water if we expect to inherit a better world. If there is such a thing in eternal life, and in case there is, I suggest that you consider it very seriously, that there is eternity, that you can't die. You can't get off this train of life. That once you're a human being, you've been given eternal life. For, I believe all the creatures are. All of them. Nothing can really die. Not at, any of the flora and fauna. I mean, there's no reason for it to. Life is life. And it just transforms from, you know, that's it. It just morphs. So it's all there in great superfluity. And we're a part of it. We can't get off this train. So just in case I say you buy some free insurance, I mean, what's it cost you? Nothing. And you be like God, and you get all the wisdom of the ages. And God says, I'm not going to keep anything good from you. I, I need you to emulate me and properly mirror me and reflect me and represent me. So, yeah, I'll let you see through my eyes. You want the truth? Well, there's nothing with the truth. Open up your hands. I'll fill it up. Good measure. Press down. Shaken together. Overflowing. Right? That's the way he is, man. And everybody can get it. It's anybody, Any thinking person, any honest person can get it. And that's what I'm essentially talking about. Get it. Get what this good fight is. Being a friend to humanity, being a friend of God, a servant to humanity, a servant to God. And, how, you know, what we're looking for. What is the world of tomorrow? Cultivate it. Be ready for it. You see, you're getting yourself ready for it. You can't worry if the rest of the world is unprepared. If you've been trying to prepare them, you've done your job. You've done your best. That's all I'm trying to do. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. And I wouldn't want to make it drink, right? If it wants to die of thirst, that's its business. But yet, I don't want your blood on my hands or head, my, your metaphorical blood. And that's what it is to me. If I don't warn people of the coming wrath of the Lord, but his cup filled with the fury of his indignation, it's coming upon the world. And I just want everybody to be prepared as, as possibly you can. you got a little window of opportunity to prepare yourself, your heart and your mind. And I suggest you do it. Okay? That's it. That's the best I got, man, is that I'm everybody's friend. That's my decision. Because I believe in, in loving my enemies. And once you really believe that, and God shows you a way that that's possible, and that you can reconcile it in your mind that, yeah, you might, you know, without malice of forethought or any premeditation, you catch a pedophile in the act of harming a child, and you might, you know, grab him by the neck and snap it. But 
you know what I mean? Uh, it's okay that you still love them up to the end, but you could not allow harm to come to an innocent child, you know. So you can do it. God will find a way that you can reconcile that, that you can have a pure heart, but still be willing to be his friend to that degree, kind of like Moses, what he did with the slave driver. And um, he slew him because he was so appalled. He was so incensed by what he saw. So that can happen. So you can reconcile it in your mind. God will find a way for you to get it. Okay, just accept the truth, the whole truth, not but the truth. However eye-opening, eye-popping, traumatic, and just wowing it is, okay, when you see the contrast between how God wants us to live and the way we've been living for thousands of years, okay, and that's available to everybody, okay, we're all without excuse. We're all going to stand before God and give account. And you think I'm sitting here on some high horse? You think that's going to help? Is that going to make what I have to convey more palatable to anybody? No. There's no benefit to me being right and pointing out, well, you're wrong, I'm right, and I'm better than you, I'm smarter than you. I don't give a crap. I just, I want to be effective, man. I want a better world of tomorrow to leave my children and their children, perhaps, just as a right thing to do for God and man to be his friend and servant. I've got to work for a better world, and you should want to have a better world and work for it and feel worthy and deserving of that better world, even if it's just a shot in the dark. It just may or may not be true, but it's free insurance. Why not? Why not? And considering the implications, if it is true and you haven't invested anything in it, any time or any any effort into Judgment Day, okay, and, and teaching other people that they need to prepare themselves for that day, I'm sorry, but I, you know what? I don't see, I don't see anything good there. I see a dead end, and I don't like dead ends. I like life. I don't like death. Okay, that's it. I believe in eternal life, and I don't believe in eternal death, but that's what a lot of atheists believe. They think it's just over, that you exist only as a human, it's all just a fluke, and then you're just not even going to exist anymore. I mean, I don't even know how a living human being can believe it. How can that even, it doesn't jibe for me. It doesn't make any sense. It's illogical. There's so much miraculous and mysterious wonderment about the human being i mean like the scriptures say we are we are fearfully and wonderfully made to put it poetically i mean to food for thought i mean this thing is winding up okay the bible is like a book that predicts how it's going to end and god is filling this cup he has with the fury of his righteous indignation a beautiful thing and when god gets jealous it's a beautiful thing unlike our impure jealousy it's pure. It's all for good intent. He loves us. He wants us to turn to Him, okay, because He's the only one that can know, love, and understand us the way we need to be known, loved, and understood. And He's the only one that can save our lives, okay? He's the only one that can really help us to get it and to be empowered and to then to convey what we know to others. And to condense it, like I was talking earlier about Carol Quigley, even though I don't know, you know, but I listen to people that have read his writings, okay, and I understand where they're, what they're talking about. They're saying it's important to them. <laughs> it really helped open their eyes to the fact that there's not cons just conspiracy theories out there, but it's often the conspirators that throw out the conspiracy theories and they want people to, like the flat earth thing or, you know, we've never been to the moon. All these crazy things that are unscientific and illogical on their face, prima facie. But, and so they try to lump everything together so they get to throw the baby out with the bathwater. So you bring up 9-11 or something. I mean, CBS Sunday Morning did a thing where they're talking about these conspiracy theorists and how they still actually they couldn't get away from admitting the majority of Americans still believe there's one whole hell of a lot more conspiracy surrounding that JFK assassination than we're being led on to. Okay, so that is profound, man. That shows that this deep state thing is real. It's even mainstream media cannot lie to that degree. The people know it. They know it in their gut. We know. We know. Quay bono. Why does the Federal Reserve exist day one after that assassination? When they benefited hugely, immeasurably, magnanimously. And he was getting rid of this organization. 
this mafioso money printing fraudulent organization of murderers and liars and thieves and monsters and cheaters. They shouldn't exist. So I happen to know my tape is running out and I uh, need to move to um, put in a new tape and finish 